Hi, this is going to be a quick walkthrough of a basic bobcat commissioning. Uh, as you can see in the image, I have a live uh, BRS-50. This is one of the, um, the upper end bobcats. Uh, it has four tri-speed SFP sockets. So these tri-speed sockets support both 100 gig and the 2.5 gigabit uh, SFP uh, adapters. Uh, in addition to this, there are eight 10, 100, and gig RJ45 ports. And as you can see from the image, uh, there is no longer an RJ11 um, on this switch. Instead, this has been replaced with a much more current standard, uh, that being the USB type C. The neat thing about this USB type C is this offers an out of band port. Uh, it creates a virtual networking um, connection to the switch and allows you to communicate uh, and manage the switch uh, completely out of band. Uh, that being that it, even if the switch is completely flooded with traffic uh, through the ports, you will still and always have um, a management connection into the switch through that USB port. So out of the box, just as with all of our switches, the switch does not have an IP address, meaning that you will be able to utilize our uh, high discovery protocol, uh, either in the high discovery app or in the high view app and within high view utilizing the high discovery functionality. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I am going to connect to the switch. Uh, this is probably one of the uh, most, the more unusual uh, features uh, for any of our customers that are very familiar with the existing um, portfolio. Um, so here we go. So as you can see, um, I currently have a network connection into port five. The switch does not have an IP address. I've given my laptop an IP address of 192.168.99.101, I believe. Uh, for right now, at least, the um, that networking connection is rather relevant because what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this USB-C connection and I'm going to connect into that switch. And when I do, it's going to allow me to connect into that switch as though it were a drive. Uh, this is a read-only drive, so the the chance of uh, dropping in any um, any additional information, um, be it drivers, uh, configurations, or otherwise, uh, is impossible. And within here, you have a README file. Uh, the README file, this here is Windows 10, so this OS that I'm operating in um, is Windows 10. And um, within this README file, you will find instructions on how to enable this um, this Windows networking driver. So uh, with the with Windows 7, uh, with Windows 7, um, you will find your drivers right here. So there, um, there's both a serial and a network uh, driver. But for Windows 10, the process is slightly different. So this is a one-time only um, thing that you need to do for the very first uh, Bobcat that you connect to. And when you first connect into it and you go into your device manager, and that is in your control panel, so within the device manager, you will see this device right here. And if I go to update this driver and I browse my computer, I will pick from a list of available drivers and I want to scroll down to the networking adapters. So network adapters, next. And I want the Microsoft, so I just clicked on one and then typed in the M, and that significantly speeds up the browsing process. So I want to go to Microsoft. And then from within here, I forget which one it is, um, it is the remote NDIS compatible device. So within here, 
do an R, remote NDIS compatible device. Click next. I do get an alert. I will click yes. It has updated my driver. And um, with this virtual driver, it's going to allow me to now log into the switch with this IP address. So I'm going to copy this, open up a web browser, paste it, enter. This site is not secure um, because there's currently no certificate set up and I am now logged into the switch utilizing this virtual uh, network adapter through the USB-C. So as with all of our other switches, uh, the username is admin and the password for read write is private. And with that, we will um, we'll be logging in here in a second and you will have full management capability uh, of this switch if you so wanted to, if you wanted to secure that, um, that out of band port, you can either disable this, change the IP address, so the variety of things that you can do from within here. And even if you wanted to right now, you can give this device an IP address uh, so that I could connect to it over the network. So really, really slick feature. Um, it's something that someone is going to need to read the instructions for um, when first connecting or um, being able to discover this video to see the, um, the quick connection. Couple things uh, before you uh, finish off this video. Uh, any time that you make any changes, these changes will reside in volatile memory. Meaning that if you were to power cycle the switch right now, any changes that you have made will be lost. So if you change the, um, if you enter an IP address in here, if you make any changes to any of the configurations um, of the management functionality of the switch, it will reside in volatile memory until you go to load save. So load save can be accessed by clicking this flashing disk icon. This flashing disk icon is an indicator that there has been a change that has not been saved to the non-volatile memory. You can also access it through this uh, tab right here um, in the menu structure and that will effectively take you to the same place. So whether I click on this or whether I click on this, it takes me to the same page. And here, I can click on the save icon. When I do this, it um, takes all of the changes that I've made and moves everything from the volatile memory and puts it in the non-volatile memory so that the changes will persist through a power cycle or a re uh, reboot. So. With that, I hope that this has been informational and beneficial to you. If there's anything that we can do for you, please feel free to reach out as needed. Thanks. Take care.